Folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, and we're here at Iron Sport Gym with Chris of Warhorse Barbell in Philadelphia, and he's gonna be our test dummy for how to fix mistakes in the dumbbell chest fly. Arnold did them, and you're not better than Arnold, so do them too, and let's figure out how you're messing this up. All right, folks, first mistake in the dumbbell fly, it's not first for any reason of the fact that I just wrote it down first. It's actually uh, interesting, uh, we have an opposite mistake we'll talk about later. This one is actually keeping the elbows too straight or too locked out. So what's gonna happen here is Chris is gonna press the dumbbells out and get ready to fly. He's gonna keep his elbows completely locked out because he's super dedicated to strict technique. He's gonna do a, a dumbbell fly with his elbows completely straight, right? And then he's gonna come back up, just whatever dumbbell fly, and he's gonna do a couple more reps just like that. I mean, it externally looks like, okay, this clearly has to be training the chest, but there is a problem. Go ahead and rack Chris and just relax. So what ends up happening here is, if you have your elbow out completely, it does the same thing as essentially locking or close to locking your knees out for your hamstrings, it does that for your biceps. Another way to say this is that it makes your biceps a limiting factor for the exercise. It stretches them a ton, and it actually is a great bicep exercise, believe it or not, but it can leave your pecs lacking. It actually means the pecs are not the limiting factor anymore and the biceps can give out first or take more of the toll, and that's not ideal because this is the chest fly. So the correction for this, go ahead and Chris and come out. You can start locked out, but then you wanna unbend your elbows and, and, and just give yourself a little bit of slack. It's gonna be personal, usually something like 135 degrees, yep. And he's gonna go all the way down and all the way back up. And now he's getting more chest involvement, less bicep limitation. His shoulders are probably feeling better and we're getting a better chest workout. So the last mistake was keeping the arms too straight and thus the biceps and shoulders take too much of a hit and not the pecs. We can overfix this sometimes, or sometimes just to use more weight, we can bend the elbows a ton. So Chris is gonna go ahead and do a fly where he bends the elbows a ton and he's gonna go ahead and go through the motion. Yeah, sure, that sort of looks like a fly, but it's really kind of like more of a press at this point. Why do people do this? Number one reason, right? Good enough, Chris, you can relax. The number one reason people do this is just so they can use more weight. Now, sometimes it still hits their pecs a lot, but if you wanna use a lot of weight and you wanna hit your pecs, just do a press, right? There's even another exercise that's pretty advanced called a combination fly press that you could do. If you're doing flies, do them properly, which means just barely bending the elbows to get a huge chest hit and using a big moment arm to really get your arms out there. So go ahead and do the correction, just bend them less, yep, and go ahead and do a proper dumbbell fly all the way nice and deep and all the way back up, perfect. Elbows are neither too straight nor are they too bent and we get the best chest workout and not a whole lot of everything else. All right, folks, next mistake is doing a really good fly on the eccentric, but on the concentric, maybe you get freaked out, the weight is too heavy, you're trying to get more reps than you should be able to with strict technique, and you start turning it into a press on the way up. So Chris is gonna do a very good fly on the way down. Yep, he's gonna control the weight, nice open angle, and then on the way back up, he's gonna start pressing it back up, which is kind of weird because yeah, you can lift more weight like this, but what's the point if you're gonna do both a fly and a press at the same time? There's actually an exercise called a combination fly press, which you could be doing instead more appropriately, but this isn't it. So when we do flies, we're gonna do them correctly, go do them right this time by flying up and flying down under strict control and the same elbow angle every time. Go ahead and stop. If you're changing your elbow angle midway through, you know you're onto something that's not ideal. This mistake's not a huge deal, but it's sort of pointless, so we might as well not do it. A lot of folks will do a really good fly, and Chris is gonna demonstrate a good fly, go nice and deep all the way down, and then come back up, and he's gonna clank the dumbbells together at the top. Now, there's nothing wrong with clanking them, but the last, basically, several inches of the range of motion, gravity doesn't point sideways, folks. It only points up and down. If you want a good peak contraction for the chest, that's what cable flies are for. That's what the pec deck is for. So what he's gonna do with a proper fly is go nice and deep as usual, and he's gonna come back up and stop right where the gravity stops affecting when his arms are straight up and down. That's it. Common mistake in the dumbbell fly is to not get that extra deep stretch in the pecs at the bottom. It's easy to cut your range of motion, use more weight or get more reps, but the reality is you're not getting nearly as good of a stimulus that way. 
So ideally, uh, what you wanna do is go nice and deep. You don't wanna go too deep to where you feel shoulder pain, but you wanna go nice and deep. So this is really good depth, right? That's a proper fly, but some people don't do that. They're gonna do sort of a halfway down fly where they stop right there, and then they come back up. Like, is that deep? Sort of. It's not that great though. We can go deeper, so go ahead and Chris and start going all the way down. Super deep, big stretch on the pecs, and then all the way back up. And then another one, super deep stretch for the pecs, and all the way back up. As long as your chest is stretching, good, you can stop. As long as your chest is stretching, and you feel tension in your muscles, you're good to go, all right? So you don't have to worry about going too deep. If you're going too deep, and you're losing tension on your pecs, and you've got shoulder problems at that point, that's too deep. But as long as your chest is feeling in a ton, you're well on your way. If you've been doing chest flies only to a partial range of motion and you wanna go deeper, you don't have to do it all in one training session. You can start going a little deeper every single training session and then every single training session you can expand it and as long as your pecs are feeling it more and more and your joints aren't feeling the pressure, keep going. So if you are used to flying just to here and you wanna end up with a super deep fly that's more effective, you don't have to do it all in one day. Work your way in slowly. A mistake that is often made and it's actually a little bit dangerous is dropping the flies down way too quick. Folks, the point of the fly is not to go as fast as possible to get the reps done. It's to stimulate the muscles safely. So some folks will do this, where they'll drop the weight down fast, and then they'll come back up, and they'll drop the weight down, and then they'll come back up. Not the greatest thing, and it's not even that great for your pecs. What you wanna do, the fix here, is just go slower. Control, and then come back up quickly, and then control on the way down, and then come back up quickly. You don't have to do super slow reps, but you have to be in charge the entire time, no dynamic dropping. Very related to the last mistake is a mistake of dynamically coming out of the bottom of a fly. So you can take a fly down and come out like this. There is a little bit more injury risk there, probably not a ton, but what you wanna do especially is make sure that your muscles are taking the effort, not your joints. You don't wanna use as much passive structure, you wanna use active structures, you wanna tax the muscles, which means you don't have to stop at the bottom of each fly for a second or two. You can, and that's totally cool, but at the very least, what you should be doing is slowing the movement down at the bottom, and then you can speed back up. Slowing the movement down, maybe stopping, and then speeding back up, versus doing one of those bounces at the bottom that gets you nowhere real fast. So, another common mistake in the fly is keeping the upper body rigid and flat when we fly, which ends up leading to less pec stretch and a lot of shoulder discomfort. What we wanna do instead, not over-exaggerate it, but retract our shoulder blades in the fly and arch a little bit. What that allows us to do is really open up the chest, target the chest itself, and come all the way up. Can you get a good peak contraction like that? No, you can't, but who cares? The peak contraction, that's not what the dumbbell fly is for. That's cable flies, machine flies, and so on and so forth. So instead of staying rigid and trying to fly like this, arch up, shoulders back, fly to open up your chest big time at the bottom. Last mistake we see on the fly is going either too heavy or too light. You know you're going too heavy when you lose the mind-muscle connection entirely, and if you feel mostly your joints, maybe even your elbows and your biceps, and no longer feel your pecs, you're not getting good pumps, you're not even feeling the muscle, you're just sort of surviving it. And sometimes that comes with a real big temptation to pull your elbows in, and all of a sudden you're doing God knows what. Some people can do flies in the five to 10 rep range, most people will benefit from doing flies in the 10 to 20 rep range. Maybe sets of 12, sets of 15. You can do sets of 10 and eight. I wouldn't do sets of five, usually too heavy to get actual good muscle stimulation in such an isolation exercise. On the other hand, the pecs tend to be a faster twitch muscle. Some folks want to do dumbbell flies in the 20 to 30 rep range and people can benefit but it might be that that just makes you really tired. It makes your pecs tired. It doesn't stimulate them a ton. It might actually just start taxing your shoulder or your bicep, and at that point, it's not a good pec workout. So 10 to 20 rep ranges are best recommendation for flies. You can use other rep ranges, just make sure you're still targeting the muscle and not much of anything else. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to this fly corrections video. At the end of the day, you wanna do flies and all exercises in a way that stimulates the target muscles the most and does the least amount of needless fatigue and involvement of other muscles that are not necessary. Use strict technique. The personal technique you pick is gonna be the one that hits your pecs the most, hits everything else, the least amount that's needless for it. 
If you have questions, shoot them into the comments. Folks, if you know more than someone else, please feel free to help them out by answering the questions below. And if you have any suggestions for other exercises we can do breakdowns for, let us know in the comments and we'll probably get around to it. Folks, like, subscribe, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.